Hello everybody and welcome back to another Marvel Entertainment unboxing trading card video. Uh, my name is Travis. I am the owner and operator of Omega Level Toys and Comics. Uh, some of you I think have already seen my first video. I was pretty excited to do that one, but now we're on to this new video. This one's going to be for the 1993 Marvel Masterpiece series. So if you recall from the last video, we went with 2018. Here we're going into the Wayback Machine. These are not reproductions, reprints. These are the real deal from 1993. You notice on the box a couple of interesting facts. Number one, this was Skybox's last edition at the time before Fleer took over making the cards. Uh, Spider-Man 2099 made the front of the box. At this point in time in 1993, Marvel was really pushing their 2099 label. And so a lot of those characters got cards in here. Um, if you remember from the last video, we had a lot of different subsets that we were able to collect. This series only has one subset, and it is a hollow etched set of eight cards featuring the X-Men of 2099. Uh, I've already taken the liberty of pre-cutting the plastic. So I'll get that off and out of the way. As you can see, the box is also numbered. This one is 49,550 out of 350,000. So 350,000 of these boxes. This series is gonna be a little bit different than the one we just did because these cards aren't really as rare. The series itself, the base set, only has about 90 cards in it. 89, including a checklist. There are eight possible chase cards. And these packs, as you're going to see in a moment, once I open the box, um, are a lot, there's a lot more packs in the box because the cards are a lot thinner than what we were dealing with before. So here's what the packs look like. Try and keep them in the order as I take them out. Okay, move the box over. So here we are with our packs. I'll put them to the sides that you see. So clearly not quite as thick as those packs we had on the last video. These are your standard edition trading cards from the 90s. Each pack has six cards. We've got 36 packs to open. As far as the additional information I was given on the characters, my last video ran a lot longer than I thought it was going to because of that additional information. So what I'm gonna do I'm just going to give a brief little tidbit about each character as we see them the first time. If it's a character that I think is a little less well-known, I might expand a little bit. But for the sake of time, we're going to move somewhat briskly through these cards. So here we go. Pack number one. Nice little Iron Man. Um, most of the art is done by a couple different artists. I know Joe Jusco had a little bit of hand in this series. I'm not sure who else. Hopefully the cards will let us know. Let's get into it. Right. Here we are with our first pack. Card number one is going to be Doctor Strange. Doctor Stephen Strange, Master of the Mystic Arts, Sorcerer Supreme. We've got Tony Stark himself, who was on the front of the pack, Iron Man. He may not look like you're used to seeing him, but this is Drax the Destroyer. This is the comic version back from the early 90s, long before he had joined the current incarnation of the Guardians of the Galaxy, and long before he was portrayed by Dave Bautista. This version of Drax was a member of the Infinity Watch. Here's our friend Shatterstar, back from that other series. You can look at this costume and it just screams two things, Rob Liefeld and the 90s. Kurt Wagner, also known as Nightcrawler, Remember we talked about him. He debuted in Giant Size X-Men number one when they took on Krakoa. And 90s Havoc in all his 90s glory with his cowl and his opened up jacket. Uh, the cool thing about the cards on this series is they have some old artwork and a little bit of trivia on the back of each card. So that was pack number one. Um, as I said, only one subset to look for. We did not score any in that first pack. Pack number two, we've got the Silver Surfer on the pack. Let's 
see who we got here. All right, Cannonball, one of the members of the New Mutants, and then X-Force, eventually an X-Man, and an Avenger, Sam Guthrie. As I told you, 2099 was going to be a focal point in here. Here's our cover boy, Spider-Man himself. Now, this is not Peter Parker. A lot of the 29 characters, 2099 characters were based off existing characters. This was a gentleman named Miguel O'Hara. And he had some, or O'Hara rather, and he had some run-ins with the Alchemex company in the year 2099. And then there's a very convoluted history where basically he ends up uh, being, I don't know, I feel like he's his own relative at some point. You know that Marvel continuity. During the Spider-Verse storyline, he did come to the current Marvel Universe and existed alongside our Peter Parker. Ben Grimm, The Thing, from the Fantastic Four. Here is our Peter Parker, Spider-Man himself. Pretty cool artwork. I've always been a fan of this card. This is a, one of the Inhumans, Crystal. She later on went on to marry Quicksilver. And they had a child named Luna. Crystal is, of course, one of the royal family. And then... Better Ray Bill. He was a fill-in for Thor. He was found worthy of having the hammer, and he actually was given his own hammer by Odin, known as Stormbreaker, which we've seen in the Avengers movies most recently with Thor wielding. There's a little bit of Easter egg in Thor Ragnarok. There's a Better Ray Bill statue. There's about to be a new Marvel Legends figure. I think we will see him in the cinematic universe sooner rather than later. All right, pack number three. So far, we're doing good. No duplicates. However, no chase cards. I should mention the chase cards are one in eight packs, 36 packs total. We're probably going to end up around four and say four to six of those chase cards. Once again, we've got Psylocke, Elizabeth Betsy Broddick, sister of Brian Broddick, as well as the reality warping Jamie Broddick. Natasha Romanova. The Black Widow, sometimes referred to as Natasha Romanoff. I don't know that she even knows what her last name is. Then we've got the shapeshifter Mystique, Raven Darkholm, mother of Nightcrawler, foster mother of Rogue, and mother of Graydon Creed, who was a human born from her union with Victor Creed, Sabretooth. All right, so I knew this was going to happen. There was going to be at least one that I wasn't familiar with. I know of Puma, but I don't know much about him other than he's got some affiliation with Spider-Man. If we look at the back of the card, his name is Thomas Fireheart. Genetically, and he was bred both genetically and mystically by his Native American tribe in New Mexico to be a warrior without equal. Turned his back on his tribe and went for the big city, New York. And... He has aided and fought Spider-Man, so uh, he was a big deal back in 93. He's not that great a character, but it's a decent card with some decent art. All right, here we are with Punisher 2099. Again, this is not our Punisher. This is a man named Jake Gallows. He had his family murdered in front of him. <clears throat> I believe it was by a subsidiary of the Alchemex Corporation. And so he ended up finding Frank Castle's original war journals. And the very last page in the war journal said, if you found this, I charge you with carrying on my mission. So he adopted the, the Punisher armory, weaponry, and the mission statement and began taking out criminals. Fun fact about Punisher. He eventually, um, this Punisher eventually ends up working for Dr. Doom in 2099. And in the contest of champions, ends up working for the Maestro Hulk. Here we have Ghost Rider. This version is of uh, Dan Ketch. This was the second Ghost Rider. Johnny Blaze, of course, being the first one, but he had moved on to a different role by this time, and Dan Ketch had taken up the mantle. Ghost Rider is the Spirit of Vengeance. Okay. Again, still no chase cards. I might have been thinking too much at saying we were going to get four. 
All right, here we go. First card up is the Hulk villain Abomination, Emil Blonsky. Okay, definitely uh, beautiful, beautiful artwork on here. Not sure who the artist was. Let me see if it says it. Um, Joe Phillips. Joe Phillips did this painting, so pretty cool. Gamma Radiant, bad guy, hates the Hulk. Everyone's favorite vampire hunter, Blade. This is clearly not the Wesley Snipes portrayal, but pretty damn close. And here's what he looked like in his early days. Gotta love the Daywalker. Following him, coincidentally in the pack, is Morbius, the living vampire. Michael Morbius. He was a known Spider-Man villain and ally, depending on what day of the week it was. Here we are with Omega Red, Arkady Rosevich. He was bred to be Russia's, basically their super soldier. He's got these tendrils that he can absorb the life force from other mutants, and that's how he remains in power, and it's basically his source of sustenance. He's tangled with Wolverine and the X-Men quite a few times. Doctor Doom 2099. Cool thing about this, this is our Doctor Doom. Through some sort of mishap, our Doom was transported to 2099, woke up, of course, the first thing he does is go to Latveria, go to Castle Doom, find out someone else is running it. What does he do? I need to overthrow them. He then ends up adopting this new suit of armor and becoming this new version of Doom, even fighting other people who claim to be the real Doom. But by the end of issue 25, it was solidified that this was, in fact, our Victor Von Doom. Long overdue for a figure on that one. And then... Nathaniel Christopher Summers Dayspring, a scanning son himself, Cable, the son of Cyclops. Um, pretty cool card, pretty cool artwork. We all know who Cable is. I don't feel like I need to give a lot of exposition on that. And we're still batting zero on those chase cards. All right, here's what I believe is our first duplicate card. This is going to be Doctor Strange. We already saw him. I'm going to put him over here to the side. Shatterstar is back again. That's another duplicate. Oh, here we go. So this is one of the chase cards. This is Crystalline from the X-Men 2099. She was able to make objects out of uh, sand and glass, and she used them as weapons. She turned them into, like, crystal solid objects. You see it's got the nice little shine to it. So yes, this is one of the X-Men 2099. Finally hit on a chase card. Her real name is Ruth Kirsten. She manipulates crystals into any form she desires. Kind of cool. Not my favorite of the 2099. However, it's always cool to pull a chase card. Now, one of my absolute favorites of all time, Remy LeBeau himself, Gambit. Pretty cool. Love this artwork. Definitely one of the better cards done of him in the 90s. Um, nice little picture of his original appearance in Uncanny X-Men 266. Yeah, pretty cool card. Pretty psyched to get him. What X-Men card set would be complete without the Master of Magnetism himself, Magneto. Not a big fan of this artwork. Uh, kind of gives him a fat head. Uh, you know, but they can't all be winners, right? And then we're going to finish off with Domino. Now this one, this is a very good image of Domino. Very good artwork. I'd almost say this might be Joe Jusco. Yep, that's correct. This is a Joe Jusco print. Joe Jusco did the entire inaugural series of Marvel Masterpieces, and he did such a good job, they brought him back again for some follow-up in this series. He's got a very distinct style. It, it's cartoony, but it's also very real at the same time. Going into our next pack. All right. Everybody's favorite Canuck, Wolverine. Again, this is one of those, I don't know who, so the art on this one is Bill Sinkowitz. Uh, I'm not a fan of the super exaggerated stuff like this, unless there's a reason. Like, to me, this says somebody just got hit with 
um, Mysterio's illusions and they're seeing all sorts of crazy stuff or like Scarecrow in the DC comics this is what Wolverine might look like if you know somebody had gotten hit with his fear serum here we go with Phoenix now this is not Jean Grey this is Rachel Summers a potential child of Scott and Jean from the future she came back to our time originally as a hound for Ahab who was hunting down mutants eventually turned to the side of good and joined the super mutant team Excalibur Night Thrasher one of the new warriors um, he's got a lot of popularity around him he's okay I was never a big fan of the new warriors to be honest uh, it's a decent looking card with decent art though Someone I am a fan of, old Clint Barton himself, right here, Hawkeye. Pretty cool card. I don't know what the relevance of having Hollywood in the background was unless they're trying to allude to the fact that he was a West Coast Avenger. In fact, I believe he was the leader. Here we go with a 90s rendition of Hercules, Marvel's Hercules. Although there's really no distinction between him and the Greek mythology Hercules, they're one and the same. Just like Thor is a Norse god, there were Greek gods, and they were all given actual personas in the Marvel Universe. And Mac Gargan, the Scorpion, right here in all his glory. Pretty cool artwork. I like the full face covering, only the eyes exposed, and the, the it really looks like he's crawling down the wall. So the artist did a really good job on this one. This was... Brett Belvin's Levins. All right. Whew. Still feel like I'm talking too much. Need to run through these packs. Okay. Here we are with the Human Torch. And this is Johnny Storm. Although, I'm going to reference this card later if we find a couple others. So this Human Torch is meant to depict Johnny Storm, but it also combines with a couple other cards. So we'll come back to that. Here we have Thunderstrike, James Masterson, who for a time had taken over for Thor. And, I'm sorry, Eric Masterson, who for a time had taken over for Thor and eventually became his own entity outside of the Thor persona. Jennifer Walters, the cousin of the Hulk, is here as She-Hulk. Uh, she gained her abilities from a blood transfusion from her cousin, Bruce Banner. She's also a lawyer and has been known to shack up with the Juggernaut. Here we have Cletus Cassidy, psychopath extraordinaire, in the Carnage persona. Carnage was a symbiote that was birthed from the symbiote of Venom when Eddie Brock and Cletus Cassidy were both serving time in the same jail. Definitely a cool card there. Sasquatch. Um, Walter Langowski, member of the Canadian Premier Super Team Alpha Flight. Long ties and affiliations to Wolverine. Uh, pretty intelligent, if I recall correctly, too. And super strong. And right here, one of the best cards in this series. As you can see, I got my X-Force shirt on. Here we have Deadpool. The reason I say it's one of the best cards in the series is number one, look at how beautiful that artwork is. Uh, I'm going to bet this is Joe Jusco. Yep, absolutely. Joe Jusco has the best cards in the series. This is one of his. And this is before Deadpool had become quite the, the campy wisecracker that he is nowadays. So he was still a serious badass at this point. Pretty cool card. One of my favorites from the series. I was super excited when I saw it on side of the box. Here we go with Deathlock. Not a whole lot I can tell you about Deathlock. Half man, half cyborg, and usually ends up in stories where he's being mind controlled. I really don't care much for the character. Forge, member of the X-Men, has the ability to understand machines and how they work. He can basically reverse engineer anything. You can see he more than likely built that cybernetic leg for himself. He's also a Native American. 
Here we have Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp, one of the founding members of the Avengers, in this costume that screams 1990s. You guys are going to know this one. Mr. Badass himself, the Titan Thanos. Uh, if you have just gone to and see Endgame, he played a prominent role in that as well as Infinity War. This depicts him in his comic version. And of course, I don't know, they did not draw him with the Infinity Gauntlet. That's a shame. Here we go with Frank Castle, the Punisher of our time, our world. Not to be confused earlier with Jay Gallows. This is the real deal. This is him in all his glory. Okay, now. There we go. I'm messing with different lighting, so sometimes I've got to move the cards around to make sure you guys really get a good feel of the art. And Cyber, again, somehow this dude keeps making it into these card series. He was a pretty prominent Wolverine villain for a time. I just can't believe he got this much exposure. Still sitting in only one chase card. And we're a little more than halfway through our first stack. All right. Here we go with Strife, clone of Cable, exact duplicate, uh, came back during the, came into prominence during the Executioner song storyline, trying to take Cable out, trying to frame him for the murder of some, uh, of, I think it was Charles Xavier actually. Here we go with Rogue, did not like this artwork growing up as a kid, it looked like her hair was, I don't know, you can see from the picture, just something about it that doesn't look natural. It kind of throws me out of really finding the card believable, as crazy as that sounds. Here we have Longshot, mutant refugee from the Mojoverse. He is very similar to Domino in that his powers are to control probability. Things just kind of work out in his favor. We spoke about Eddie Brock a few minutes ago. Here he is himself, Venom. Eddie Brock as the Venom symbiote, that's an okay card. I've seen much better depictions of him, but, you know, nothing's better than that, that first appearance Venom. Here we have Warren Worthington III as the high-flying Archangel. This is, of course, after Angel had lost his wings during the Mutant Massacre and then had been transformed into the Horseman of Death by Apocalypse. And rounding out that pack is the Submariner, the first, well, one of the first mutants, although Apocalypse that predates him, Namor, Prince Namor, basically Marvel's Aquaman. Now you notice that background looks a little bit familiar. We're going to come back to him as well. We're missing one piece of the puzzle. Here we go. Pretty impressive that we've gone through these many packs and only had two duplicates so far. Here we have Adam Warlock, definitely that 90s inspired costume. Those of you not familiar with Adam Warlock, you're going to get familiar with him once Guardians 3 comes out. He was what was in that cocoon at the end of Guardians 2 in that end credit scene. And if that's a spoiler warning for you, I'm so sorry you haven't seen the movie yet. Get over it. It was years ago. Okay. Here we have the Android Vision. Um, I know he started in that solid white look, but I've always been a fan of the red, green, and yellow. Another duplicate with Havoc. Here we have our first Bruce Banner, the Hulk. And this is another one of those cards very similar to that Wolverine. Seems like a bad acid trip. It's not really a fan of the art. Some people may like it. It is what it is. Johann Schmidt, the Red Skull. He doesn't look menacing enough in this picture for me. It is a good representation. He just looks a little goofy, though. I don't know. Maybe it's the long cigarette or the cock eyes. And then this card is always fun to get. This is the checklist. So if you notice from last night with our set, we did not get a checklist, which kind of bums me out because it makes it hard to keep up with all those cards that they have front and back. These checklists here actually also include the eight subset chase cards as well. Pretty cool. Looking them over, we've almost got a full set, honestly. Here's what we've opened so far with very few duplicates. Uh, I don't know the math. 
However, we're getting close to where I'm going to be flying through these last few packs because we're not going to have many new cards. All right, here we go. Hank McCoy. The Beast. One of the best X-Men. One of the founding X-Men. This card we're going to come back to in a minute. Here is the spirit known as Vengeance. This is not Ghost Rider. This is, uh, his name was Michael Badalino. And he was possessed by the spirit Zarathos, kind of like Ghost Rider was. And he was a little more uh, in your face, a little more aggressive than your Johnny Blaze and your Dan Ketch. Here we've got Forge. He can keep going. Hulk 2099. So in my prep for this video, I did not read about Hulk 2099. His name is John Eisenhart. He was a Hollywood lawyer. And of course, he got bombed with experimental gamma radiation and became the Hulk in 2099. So there you go. Same face, different time. Here we have Dane Whitman, the Black Knight. Dane Whitman's a very interesting character. He dates back all the way to the Middle Ages and even the Crusades. And he's a character that's come back again and again. And he's noted by having his weapon, the Ebony Blade. He's been a ruler of, I want to say it was called Weird World. And he's been a longtime Avenger off and on. So this card I said I was going to come back to, Captain America. Steve Rogers, the hero's hero. As you can tell, I'm a huge fan. Here's what's interesting about this card. So we bring back that Human Torch from earlier. Try and line these up. And we bring this Namor here. And these cards form together to fit a picture. However, that's John Hammond Human Torch. The Human Torch from the wars, from when they were the invaders. Not Johnny Storm. If you look at the back of the card, though, it clearly states that it's Johnny Storm. So they're kind of having their cake and eating it, too, with this. The other thing that's kind of weird about this is these don't go in order. This is card number two. This is card 15. And this is card number nine. So when you put them in a binder, they're completely separated. I remember as a kid being like, hey, wait a minute. Those look like they go together. All right. Jim Hammond, not John Hammond. It's been a long day. All right. Rogue again. Long shot again. Venom. Archangel. Namor. So almost all duplicates. And Jean Grey. Jean Grey, wife of Cyclops, mother of Cable, founding X Man. see how quick we can go through these last few packs on this stack. All right. Here's still some new ones. Julie Carpenter, Spider-Woman. Pretty cool. I'm going to say, uh, no, not Joe Jusco. This one is Tristan Shane. Not familiar with Tristan Shane, but I do love this artwork. I think it paints a very good picture of Spider-Woman there. Here we have the man without fear, Matthew Murdock himself, Daredevil. James Rhodes, the War Machine. If you look at the back of the card, pretty cool. It's him portraying Iron Man. He did that for a time when Iron Man was out of commission until he ended up getting his own armor. Crusher Creel, the Absorbing Man. The ability to... Basically take on any surface that he touches and transform his body into that. Here we have Lorna Dane Polaris, the daughter of Magneto. I know it was only rumored in the 90s, but it has long since been proved that she is, in fact, his uh, other daughter. Uh, then they retconned to where Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were not his kids, but I think that was more to do with the Fox, Hullabaloo, and now that it's over, they'll probably be his kids again. And Adrian Toomes, one of the Sinister Six, the Vulture, noted Spider-Man villain. Gotta be getting close to having that full 90, 90 card set. 
I do know a couple in the top of my head that we haven't found yet, though. Speaking of which, here we go. Wilson Fisk, the kingpin. Uh, they kind of make him look a little childish. He has a deep intellect that's not portrayed in this picture. Annihilus, uh, ruler of the negative zone many times by using his cosmic control rod, longtime villain of the Fantastic Four, also started the Annihilation Wave, which was, if you haven't read Annihilation, it is a hugely successful Marvel cosmic storyline. It basically changed the face of Marvel's cosmic comics. Pretty badass villain there. Piotr Rasputin, also known as Colossus. This is long before, well, not long before, about a year or two before Fatal Attractions happened and he defected to become one of Magneto's acolytes. He died carrying the legacy virus and then came back because in comics, no one stays dead. Here we have the Silver Surfer. You've noticed him probably from the front of some of the packs. Here's that artwork right there side by side. Pretty cool card, Norrin Rad, former Herald of Galactus. Here comes Forge sneaking back in again. And we're going to finish that pack out with Scott Summers himself, Cyclops. Pretty cool artwork there. Pretty badass. I always like the Jim Lee inspired costume for Cyclops. All right. Here we go with Victor Creed, Sabretooth. Yeah. Looks like he's on that same acid trip as Wolverine. Here's Dr. Doom. And what's pretty cool about this is I hadn't seen this card in years. And I just caught this on the cover of it. Glenn Fabry. Looking at this card now in my older years, I can absolutely tell that that is a Glenn Fabry painting. For those of you that don't know him, he did the covers for all of the issues of Preacher. And in fact, this image was reused on a Preacher cover or very similar for a cop who also doubled as a gimp. Little tidbit for you there. Here's the brother of Elizabeth Broddick, Brian Broddick, Captain Britain himself. He is one of many Captain Britons that are spread out throughout the multiverse. They work in conjunction with Roma and Merlin to protect the multiverse. He also led the superhuman team Excalibur. Here we have Lucas Bishop, or also just affectionately known as Bishop, Lucas didn't come around till years later when it was proven that he was a grandchild or descendant of Gateway the Aborigine. Here he is early on. He had not been part of the team for very long. That beautiful Joe Jusco Domino is back, and here's Fat Face Magneto again. Okay. All right, Polaris Extra, Iron Man Extra. All right, I'm excited about this one. I'll get to that in one second. Here we have the Falcon. We had not had him yet. Uh, longtime friend of Steve Rogers, member of the Avengers, Sam Wilson. Terax, also another former Herald of Galactus, very similar to Silver Surfer. We got another Psylocke, she's a duplicate, and we finally popped our second chase card. This is Cerebra, one of the X-Men 2099. I had this card when I was a child. I was really hoping I was going to get it again in this box because I just always thought it was a pretty cool image. She was basically the X-Men 2099's version of Cerebro. She could detect mutant signatures and just had a, a way of being able to communicate with other people through their bodies. She could also, she was very similar to the character Sage, where she could jumpstart dormant mutant abilities. And pretty cool cards. So we got her and Crystalline. Okay, here we have Vulture 2099. Not our Vulture, just another fellow who decided to become a criminal in the year 2099. He was different in Adrian Toomes in the fact that he was like an actual vulture and was a cannibal. He would eat carcasses or corpses, and he wanted to rule the skies. He had a gang that followed him. I forget what they were called. It might say back here, the Freaker Gang. Yes. Uh, and his real name was unknown at the time of this card. I don't know if that was ever confirmed. 
Here we have Lilith. Lilith is the mother of all demons. She has been around for millennia. She was trapped in another dimension. However, she was able to manipulate things from that other dimension and still breed her children, which no matter what machinations they had of their own, they always ended up following her as well. At some point, she was able to break free, break free from her ancient prison and decided to seek vengeance on Ghost Rider and Johnny Blaze as they had already taken up to killing a lot of her children. So she became a natural enemy of the spirit of vengeance. Here we have U.S. Agent John Walker. He uh, was an alternative to Captain America. He picked up the shield for a time when Cap was not going to do it, and he's been kind of a back and forth for a while. Danny Rand, the immortal Iron Fist. Pretty cool art. And, yep, Joe Jesco. Not surprising there. You can see the detail that he puts into his cards. Pretty badass artwork there. Probably the best Iron Fist has ever looked. Coincidentally, we also happen upon Typhoid Mary. Typhoid Mary was a schizophrenic and a prostitute. Uh, she suffered from having multiple personalities. One was very timid, one was very aggressive, one was kind of in between. She was a long-time love interest slash villain for Daredevil. Also fought Deadpool a few times. Um, I'm not really sure who else in the comics. She's mostly around Daredevil. Probably had some battles with Elektra, too. And we have Darkhawk here. Chris Powell found this amulet, and it gave him the powers of the Darkhawk. It also gave him access to the lineage of the Darkhawk, where he could view memories and experiences from previous incarnations. Very similar to an Assassin's Creed type character, if you will. Last pack of our first stack, so that means we are 18 packs into the 36 pack box. We got the Weather Witch Aurora Monroe Storm herself. There you go. Pretty cool card. Not sure what's going on with those wolves on the bottom. Hercules is a duplicate. We've already seen him. Thor Odin's son, right here. Flinging Mjolnir in all his glory. Pretty cool card for Thor. Terax is back. Duplicate of the Falcon. And another Gambit. Okay. We are now on to the second stack. And we are at 37 minutes in the video, so I'm going to try and pick up the pace a little because I don't think we're going to have that many new cards. All right, we've got She-Hulk. We've seen her. Abomination. Blade. Morbius following Blade again. Omega Red and Doom 2099. Duplicates. What do we have here? Chris Powell, the Dark Hawk. Sam Guthrie, Cannonball. Miguel O'Hara, Spider Man 2099. Ben Grimm, the Thing. Peter Parker, Spider Man. And Crystal the Inhuman. All cards we've already seen. Should call this the Lightning Round, I guess. We're probably only going to have two more cards to really talk about. This is going to be our third Gambit, our third Psylocke, second Black Widow, second Mystique, second Puma, and second Punisher 2099. Alright. Cable. Human Torch, Havoc, Thunderstrike, Carnage again, and Sasquatch. All dupes. Better Ray Bill, 
Death Lock. I believe this is the fourth Forge card we've had. The Wasp, Thanos, and the Punisher. You never know, guys. I may have a second basic set if somebody's interested. Um, not really worried. You don't have to pay me for them. I'll just send them to you if you want them. Here we have Ghost Rider. Wolverine. Rachel Gray Phoenix. Night Thrasher. Hawkeye. Sabretooth. Getting down to the wire, I was thinking four to six chase cards. You might only end up with three. And bad odds there. Thunderstrike. Nightcrawler. Puma. Wolverine. Ghost Rider. And Serpentina. One of the X-Men 2099. Here's our chase card. Pretty cool. She had the ability, very similar to Mr. Fantastic, she could stretch and manipulate her skin. If you see her arm, it's kind of wrapping around this uh, pole right here. Pretty cool card. I've never owned this one in person, so it's kind of cool for me to see it. Getting only the chicks. I would really like to find a Skullfire. He was one of the male members of the X-Men 29. Either him or La Lunatica. They were two of my favorites. Have not come across them yet. Here we go. Cyber. Oh, there's a basic card that we were still missing, apparently. Ravage 2099. Ravage is an interesting character. So he is one of the only 29 characters that was not created as a caricature of something that was currently going on. You had Spider-Man 2099, Hulk 2099, Doom 2099, X-Men 2099. Ravage was completely new for the 2099. He was a he was a fighter who was trying to fight pollution and global warming and just the world is dystopian in 2099, so he was against that. He eventually ended up getting abilities where his hands, he could break things down like a corrosive type of power. So yeah, cool character. We're missing him. Here's Beast, here's Cap, and here's Nova. I don't believe we've had Nova yet. Richard Ryder, Nova. So maybe there was a second card that I was missing. Uh, you guys can correct me later if I did something wrong, but I don't believe we've seen Nova, so I'm going to put here in the stack of Keepers. Everybody else goes in the stack of Give It Away, Give It Away now. All right. Scorpion, Strife making a comeback. Rogue once again. Long shot. Venom and Archangel. Unless we find another Nova and a Ravage, I may only have one set out of the box. Here we go with Adam Warlock. The Vision. She-Hulk. Hulk. The Checklist. And here is Rhino. I don't believe we had Rhino earlier either. Maybe I overlooked him and I'm not sure. Uh, pretty cool character, pretty decent artwork. There's that Ravage 2099 we were going to need for that second set, so got him. Got another Beast. Got yet another Captain America. Have another Nova. Have another Vengeance, and have another Hulk 2099. Down to the wire, guys, in case y'all are wondering. Six packs left, maybe? Trying to hurry through. Thought I was going to shave some time. It's turning out this video is going to be just as long as the last one. Here we have Drax. Abomination. 
come back to him. Mystique, Black Widow, and Punisher 2099. We did pop another chase card in this pack. It is Metalhead. He has the ability to manipulate metal, not in the way Magneto does. He can pull it to him and he can use it to uh, He can use it to rebuild his body at times when he's damaged. I did a little bit of note looking for on him before the video. However, my mind just completely blanked, as you know, by the dead space just now when I was looking at the card. So we are sitting currently at four chase cards out of the box with one, two, three, four, five, six packs left to go. Maybe we'll get lucky, get one more, or not. We shall see. Red Skull, Spider-Woman, Daredevil, War Machine, Absorbing Man, Polaris. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm gonna take this one from the back just because I'm so sick of seeing it. And get it to come apart. I'll just go from the front then. Black Knight, Kingpin, Nihilus, Colossus, Silver Surfer, and our fifth Forge card. There should be no short supply of Forge cards in the world. People should easily be able to find it. If not, PM me. I clearly have them. Maybe I'm cornering the market on it. Jean Grey. Sabretooth. There's that Glenn Fabry, Dr. Doom again. Captain Britain. Bishop. And that Joe Jusco Domino. Vulture card that we started the video with, Doctor Strange, Iron Man, Drax, second card we had Shatterstar, and Nightcrawler. Two packs left, kids. Feeling like I'm not going to pop any more chases. Be surprised if I do. We got a Cyclops, Vulture 2099. Lilith, U.S. Agent, Iron Fist, Typhoid Mary. All right, boys and girls, here we are. Very last pack. Let's see if we got anything decent or if it's just going to be some comments. Fat Face Magneto. Weird Head Storm. Way too close up saber tooth. Nice looking Thor. Terax. And the Falcon. Womp womp. So there we go. Full box. 36 packs. The chase cards are 1 in 9 packs. 9, 18, 24. Yeah. No. 9, 18, 27, 36. So it's about what and what. It was supposed to be 1 every nine packs and we got four cards so it looks like it worked out the way it was supposed to just to recap we got metalhead serpentina cerebra and crystalline the four that we're missing were skullfire la lunatica bloodhawk and i forget the fourth one Zion Shikan or something like that. I believe he went by the name Mean Streak, but I could be wrong. Anyway, that's going to conclude our 1993 Marvel Masterpiece unboxing. Here we have our full 90 base card series, I'm pretty sure. Four chase cards. Not sure that I want to spend the money to buy a whole nother box. This one was about 35 40 bucks. I got it in a trade from a good friend. So I don't know that I'll do another one to try and find those other four chase cards. We would be opening 36 packs of cards we've already seen. So 
this will probably be the only one we do. As always, if you've got any comments, if anything I said didn't make sense, if you'd like to see pictures of some of the cards up close or anything like that, don't hesitate to give me a comment. And as always, let me know if there's anything I can do better. Thank you guys for tuning in. I appreciate you taking the time. And in closing, you know what I'm going to say. Make mine marvel.